What is up? It is February 2nd. Very cold. Haven't seen you in a while, but I'm back here with a thrift store haul. And this thrift store haul is a little bit different. It's more fun. It involves you guessing how much revenue all this stuff here is going to bring in using Amazon FBA. And so I'm going to say these things. I'm going to explain what they are, what I bought them for, uh, why they're valuable if they are particularly valuable. And then you're going to write down what you think they're worth. And at the end of the video or the end of this, you are going to write down in the comments what you think it is. And then, I mean, obviously you can cheat because at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you on this beautiful spreadsheet I made what the uh, actual estimated revenue is going to be. Um, but until that point, it'd be kind of fun to guess and put it in the comments and see who's closest because I know you, I know a lot of you know a lot about this kind of stuff. And so it'd be a good way to kind of uh, expand your knowledge, check to see if you're right, all that good stuff. Uh, but, but before we get into it, I want to say I spent on this stuff, it was over the course of two days, $114.58. So let's, let's do this right here. It might fall off. I have it balanced on a pallet. If you can believe that. I mean, I guess this is not hard to believe, but it's a it's a figure of speech. Let me have this. 114.58. I hope that's easy enough to read. Uh, I don't think it is. I don't think it is. Ah! <laughs> well, back on. 114.58. Eight. All right, the first thing I want to go through is this right here. This is a catchphrase uh, handheld game. Normally, these are a good find, you know, if it's just like this. Like, I have one right here. Um, same game. This one is used. Obviously, this one is new. Uh, the used one and the new one, I paid $6.99 for this, but I believe I had a discount on it. Uh, and then I paid a buck ninety nine for this. And if you want to, like, double check me, I'm going to upload this the spreadsheet to my patreon and so it's like five or ten bucks a month you can see all that i'm buying uh i have the asins i, I might i'm not gonna have the locations I, I on my sheet i have location and all that stuff i'm not gonna have that because i don't want somebody to track me down and kill me because i took the last catchphrase machine or something like that but i'm gonna have what it is what the asin is what i bought it for and what my estimated revenue is going to be and i think that's a very helpful tool for someone who is new to thrifting or if they're doing a lot of online arbitrage or you know ebay to amazon any of that good stuff catchphrase a third a third catchphrase game uh what is the difference between these these three well these two right here this is catchphrase music this is catchphrase regular you might have seen catchphrase in black and red too the those are different because they say naughty words they say bad words this is pg that's pg 13 when they're red uh and those go for more because people like swearing uh, next up is these three audiobooks. Now I paid up for these. I paid $3.99 a piece uh, on these. The first one is Hollywood Crowns, Crows. I, did, I just scanned it. I don't know. Second one is Just Denied. Third one is Everywhere That Mary Went by Lisa Scottolini or Scottoline. I'm not sure. Again, four bucks a piece for these. Um, I don't pay that much normally for audiobooks, but these were new in box. And uh, I was pleased with what I saw when I scanned them. Uh, the next thing is this. Test doors. It's a, a drop cloth. Hobby drop cloth. What is that? I don't actually know. It's for like knitting or something like that. I'm not sure. Or you put it underneath your hobbies. So things when they fall, they don't get your table dirty. Again, not exactly sure. It was in the bric-a-brac bin. The bric-a-brac bin. Oh boy. The bric-a-brac bin. And I paid less than a dollar for it. Next up, a book. A little dumb paperback book, but if you examine it closely, you're gonna see the author is Stephen King. I was not, I had no intention of buying this book. I was in the checkout line and I saw this book right here for a dime. And then these seven CDs, Johnny Mathis, Heavenly, Shaggy Hotshot, Imperial Swing Orchestra, Jason Spooner, Lost Houses, right there. Uh, I'm not gonna show you the rest, but they're just, you know, seven CDs that I paid 20 cents a piece for. Um, they were having a media deal, so I was just in the line at checkout. And so I scanned a few things. Uh, these CDs, they're not big money makers. This book, it's, you know, 
It's a, a mass market paperback. I was amazed at how much it was going for. Sony CFDS28. Uh, and I this is my aftermarket cord. I bought I buy these in bulk. I pay like 68 cents per, I think. And then this, and I, I, it was real dirty. I cleaned it up. You know, it only took about a minute to wipe it down, but it looks better now. Uh, it's again the Sony CFDS28. And when I bought it, I paid five dollars for it. It was half off from ten, and uh, I couldn't test it in the store. But the Goodwill I got it from has a return policy. Uh, next up, these were both six dollars at Goodwill, but half off, so they were three dollars a piece. They are uh, PS2 Guitar Hero guitars, Red Octane. Um, you know, bread and butter items. I have, I didn't test these. Uh, they're wireless. I don't have a dongle for them. But um, the whammy bar is real tight, nothing's shaking around, nothing's loose, they're very clean. Uh, so I'm not really worried about that. Um, and yes, you can sell them without the dongle, you just have to say no dongle. Speaking of PS2s, this is going to bring back some memories for a lot of people. This is a Mad Cat MC2 uh, steering wheel with pedals. And uh, again, didn't test it, but it did power on, and there's no... No telltale signs of it breaking, nothing shaking around in there. There's no corrosion uh, that I could see from the interior. It looks to be in good condition, just doing a physical um, physical review. I paid, it was uh, listed at $12, <laughs> talked him down to $6.99. Next up is this, it's a Hanazuki little doll. I paid $3.99 for this, but it was a dollar off, so I paid $2.99. Uh, new, new in package. There's a little bit of, of wear on the bottom of the toy. I'm still gonna sell this new though. Uh, it's a relatively new toy. There's not really collectors who are out for it. It's gonna be a gift to someone, most likely like their daughter or you know, or your sister or whatever. So I wouldn't worry about this. It's gonna go in a poly bag, of course, when I ship it out. But I paid so little for it, not a big deal. This, kind of an odd one, that I don't think many people uh, would sell. This is a, uh, a door closing device. It's like an arm uh, when the door closes by itself. It has like a, a, a pneumatic pump or whatever it is that keeps it from like slamming into itself. This is not a product that I would normally buy, but it only cost me a buck ninety-nine or maybe two ninety-nine. Um, and it sells you know, uh, on Keepa. I checked it. It sells like four or five a month. So for the parent listing, um, so I assume two and two, right hand, left hand. Again, it's just kind of a nice little incremental win. Um, I'm gonna tell you what it's worth at the end of it, but we'll see. This, right here, a dream machine, Sony, what is it? ICFC218, paid a buck ninety nine for this. Again, a little bread and butter item. These sell fast, a lot of these sell every month on Amazon. I didn't pay very much for it, so it's okay. These are interesting. So these are for a, uh, a Canon photo printer, right here. I'm just gonna pull, oh, I have three of, of this one, one of these, I'm just gonna show you one of each. This is the GP701. And that's the PP301. They're both 100 count cardstock for like printing off photos. This is not so valuable. I originally, or yeah, the, the, the regular PP7 or GP701 isn't very valuable. Um, I paid a dollar a piece for these. And these are worth considerably more than these, but I, I, I picked them all up anyways. I probably shouldn't have bought this. I'm making very little money on that. Uh, but these, these are good. This, holy grail, kind of. I mean, it's. It's a good, it's a good buy. It's a, a double pack of Polaroid 600, you know, shoot out the, the bottom, what are they called? Polaroid, there's a word for it, I don't remember what it is. Um, but it's, you know, an instant film, Polaroid film. Uh, and I paid $6.99 for this, if you can believe that. This little tiny thing that expired in 2004, which is okay, as long as you say, hey, it expired 2004. Um, this, I paid, yeah, again, $6.99 for that. And so you know it's worth way more than that. If I paid up for this, for this little thing, instant film, you got a good idea, it's worth some cash. Two of these, I paid $2.99 for this one, a buck ninety nine for that one. Just basic toys. Uh, I think what happened is, is like a, a toy store donated their damaged stock to the Regional Salvation Army and they put it in a few of the, of the stores around me because I saw those in two different stores and then these three uh, shut in the box. It's like a, a dice game. I got these at all different stores as well. I paid three ninety nine for this one and a buck ninety nine for these two. Um, again, nothing special. Sales rank is like right around three hundred k for toys. So I'll probably sell these over the next like four months slowly. But they're cheap uh, and they're good to have. A bop it. 
can't turn a, you can't say no to the Boppets. Um, pretty much every single Boppets a money maker if you're buying it for a dollar or two. I paid a buck ninety nine for this. Pretty much, I mean, most of my stuff is, is two dollars or below. I don't really, <laughs> I don't buy up. I buy cheap stuff. These, speaking of that, these two things I paid four dollars for, but they're new in box. That's what I'll pay new in. I'll pay up for new in box stuff. Um, they are crossword companion rolls. Uh, I assume they go in some kind of device and you do crosswords with them. One is Jeopardy. One is the New York Times, Volume 3, Volume 8. They both have the UPC codes on back so I could find the exact ASIN for them. Uh, and I gotta say, this one is worth more than this one. And probably I shouldn't have bought this one because the sales rank is like 2 million. But I did, and I think it will sell. Just slow. Psych. Uh, Sony CD player desktop radio, you know, for your nightstand. Uh, this is actually going on a different listing. They don't have this on Amazon. They deleted the listing, which kind of sucks, but they did. Uh, there was one of these in white. I've sold them before. I just post a picture on my Amazon listing, and I say, hey, different color, same exact thing. I mean, literally down, down to the last detail. It's the same exact thing. I have not had a return yet. People say, oh, you know, as long as you, I clean these all, and I disinfect them, and I get the dust out of the cracks. People aren't really that picky when it comes, you know, if, if they can see it looks nice, eh, they're not that picky. I got this for $4.74. It's a, a, a Go Video DVD VCR combo and a relatively new one uh, as far as the Go Video DVD VCR combos go. Uh, some of them are not worth any money at all because they're just so dang heavy, the older ones. But that one sells. The sales rank is around 400000 I think. Um, and again, I paid nothing for it. I paid four dollars and seventy-four, seventy-six, seventy-four cents for it. It was nineteen. It was eighteen ninety-nine, and then I got it seventy-five percent off. It was just buried in the back. Uh, it was a green tag, so that's what I got it for. Um, I think it's gonna sell. I tested it, obviously. I had to clean out. I had to. There was some gunk on the interior of the DVD player that was keeping it. It was getting jammed, basically. But I just, it was like dust had accumulated. I cleared that off, and now it works fine. Uh, really happy with that. Fisher Price, Elephant Piano TV, um, TV, Elephant Piano, El just Elephant Piano, I I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, uh, tested this, it works, very, very light, and that's important because when you're looking at final, you know, profit, obviously there's that, the 50% fee for most of these things that Amazon takes, there's the FBA storage fee, you know, getting it to Amazon. But then the weight of these products is what's going to be the next biggest uh, indicator of a, you know, if it's too expensive to make money. And so like this, very, very light. This, pretty heavy. If this wasn't going for a, a decent amount of money, I mean, if that goes, if this, if someone in Hawaii buys that CFD S28 Sony boombox, I'm going to pay like $31 in shipping. It's going to be really expensive. And so that taken into account, that should give you an idea of what it's going for, what I think I'll make off of it. Next up, kind of a little novelty toy. It's a mute button for babies, the pacifier. Uh, I paid a dollar for that, 99 cents. These two, I paid four bucks for this and two bucks for this. They're the same thing, they're the Sony Dream Machine. Uh, ICF, let's see, ICF 121 is the brand number. Uh, just little Dream Machines. They're small, compact. This one's kind of dirty still. I didn't bring a toothbrush to wash out the buttons, so there's still some gunk in there, but when I list it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it off. Not a big deal. Uh, but these, these again, are gonna go for a lot more than you think they are. Uh, let's see, next up, we only have a few things left. Just a pretty much basic uh, mini calculator for your desk. It's Casio HR100TM. Um, I paid $3 for that. Nothing special, but they're gonna go pretty pretty quick, especially now that tax season's coming up, and that's you know like an accountant's favorite toy. I bought this, and I was so psyched. I'm gonna make a video of just just a review of this product. So this is like a, a the Star Star Wars tabletop pinball machine, but it's for the Clone Wars, which is like the worst Star Wars movie ever. So you have Hayden Christensen and Obi Wan Kenobi fighting in the top right corner. I cleaned it out. I put batteries in there, and it actually works. Son of a bitch. I'll, I'll show you in a minute, but it works. Uh, it's just a really cool thing. And when I bought it, I, I initially was looking up the ASIN for the most, they do these for all the movies. And so I was looking up the ASINs for um, Last Jedi tabletop pinball machines. 
which this is not it. And so I got home, I was like, oh no, I made a mistake. And it took some sleuthing, you know, going through a few of the listings. This ace in here is titled Star Wars Tabletop Pinball. It is like the least descriptive title based on its what it could be. It's from 2009, but there's a listing. And it has been selling, and this is gonna sell for a pretty decent amount of money. And it's not very heavy. I'd say it weighs about a pound and a half, two pounds. So it should ship for, you know, like 13 bucks. And the final one is actually a twofer. I've got, it, it was a phone set I bought. Here's, here's the main phone. It's the uh, Panasonic, let's see, I'll read you off the number. Uh, KX-TGE260. And then these are the receivers for it. There's not actually a listing for that, that main phone with three receivers. But there are listings for the phone by itself and the receivers by itself. And amazingly enough, the receivers, one receiver goes more for the whole than, than the whole phone would for, go for. Um, and don't, you know, don't sleep on those phones. They're kind of gross because you got to like wipe off the makeup and take the grime out. But if you're willing to do a little nasty work, you can make some good money. And uh, I think that's it. I think that's everything here. The, uh, the $114 I spent, if I'm forgetting anything, well, you're never going to see it because the video is not live. It's recorded, but we are going live. I'm getting the live schedule set up, so that, that's a whole different thing. Uh, anyways, though, so $114.58 spent over two days. I'd say it took me four hours to get this, and then an hour and a half to do all the look up and cleaning and that kind of stuff. So probably when I'm all, all said and done, I, I bet I'll be in eight hours uh, with, you know, listing time and everything. So right now, I want you to take the number that you have in your head and in the comments, post it. Say, okay, I think he made this much money. And we're going revenue here, okay? We're not going profit because obviously I can't predict where these are going, how much shipping will be, what the storage fees are going to be, if there's going to be returns. I can't do that. But what I can tell you is here's revenue. And if you sell on Amazon, you can go through your uh, payments and say, okay, how much am I paying in fees a month on average? And just take that number, that ratio, and extrapolate it because that's what we do. We're problem solvers. We extrapolate everything. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, what is the total revenue I'm going to make on these out of this $114.58 investment? I believe, and this is maybe a little bit high, maybe a little low, but you know, within 15%, $1,734.60. I'm gonna write that down right here. I'm gonna hold it because I'm gonna break this time. One, seven, three, four, and 68. Yeah! That's a lot of money. If you wanna see the exact uh, ASIN list I have right here, subscribe to my Patreon, join the Facebook group, all that jazz. I'll see you guys later.